What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Save Point Podcast, Episode 9. I am one of your co-hosts, Alex, and I am joined, as always, by my good friend, Sway. And we're here uh, to kind of do what we did last week a little bit, talk about... I mean, we're in the thick of things, right? We're in the wave of games. Um, we've both been doing stuff, so we'll talk about what we've been playing, and then also Hogwarts Legacy. That's going to kind of be the secondary topic coming out next week. I'm sure next week it will be kind of just devoted to Hogwarts. And then we'll, you know, there, there's a lot to, to go over as the months go on. Jedi Survivor getting, giving Hogwarts a little bit more room to breathe a little bit as well there. So, Sway, how are you? Uh, what you been up to? Anything you want to say to to open it up? Pretty much still knocking out Fire Emblem. Still loving it. Um, My God, I, I am on Chapter 20. I stopped for a minute to start grinding my character, so a lot of training, a lot of skirmishes, and... um. Just upgrading my characters, really, trying to get the emblem rings, trying to get the bonds, uh, trying to get everything I can so that way I can just flow through the rest. Because chapter 11, if you played Fire Emblem, chapter 11, uh, if you don't prepare correctly, <laughs> it will uh, do you for a doozy. Like, it, it humbled me. Um, went through the whole game with, like, so far without losing, like, any character. I got to chapter 11, like, lost three of them. And I was just like, okay, we gotta, we gotta come back here. We gotta pull it back. So, uh, other than that, yeah, that's pretty much what Fire Emblem has been my life. So what about you, Ali? Uh, Dead Space? I think just Dead Space. And then Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. I, will, we won't say, I won't say why just yet, but those are... I think that's it. I haven't touched Forspoken. I did SpongeBob, so, you know, the, the, the cat out of the bag last week as I got it early. And uh, so that was already done going into this week. It's not that long of a game. It's like 8 to 10 hours. But uh, I think this entire time has just been Dead Space and then Harry Potter and just kind of taking it a little easy because, oh, boy. Actually, my wife, yesterday when I was watching the the Buffalo Sabres play hockey and lose, she was playing, um, finally, The Witcher 3's The Next Gen Update. We downloaded it way back in December. I had played it a year ago, so we were just going to let my wife do it. And then yesterday she started playing it and uh, looks pretty good. I, I don't know. I, I can't really tell the upgrades like just by staring at it. But obviously like the exclusive mission and stuff would, would eventually, you know, appear and stuff. But um, Witcher 3 is just such a good game. That's pretty much it. Just getting ready for, well, I suppose, Hogwarts, right? That's it. Hogwarts. And then hopefully I, I, I want to give Atomic Heart some time. So I really hope Hogwarts... I want it to be as long as it wants to be, and I'm going to play it as long as I can. But I hope to, you know, on uh, February 21st, you know, jump in, see how this Atomic Heart, being on Game Pass, so you don't even have to pay for it. Hopefully, that's a good game. Um, and hopefully, I, hopefully, I can get a review code for it actually on the side. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. And speaking of Hogwarts, this is it, man. This is something that. Some of us have been on the train for a long time. The, the Hogwarts Express. Some some people jumped on a little later. But how you feeling? Considering when this video goes up Saturday, we only got like two days. Monday night, Tuesday morning, depending on what platform you're playing on, you'll be you know if you got the deluxe edition, you'll be playing this game. How does it feel? So exciting! I'm just so. <laughs> so exciting so relieved like it it has been a long journey uh from when the game was rumored to when it was officially announced to just i feel like the fandom that has stuck with it for that long um it has been a a wait till kind of like gotham knights where it was like yeah you've heard about it you've talked about it for so long and it just it's here it doesn't feel real uh yeah. but it's just uber excitement for me just i couldn't be more exciting to hop into wizarding world explore the castle um explore hogsmeade uh just do everything that there possibly is to do find yeah. out all the surprises um even the something that doesn't get talked about as much as the uh like i mean like it, it's talked about but i feel like as far as the exploration of everything goes um the story almost takes a back seat with a lot of topics. Yeah. And then like, I so think it's, it's just how like, secretive they are of it. Yeah. So I'm like, uh, it's so exciting to just like, Hey, we, everything that we're being excited for, we're just going to get to do. But then there's this whole other thing that we should be excited for that. We haven't really even like really dove into yeah. as much partially because we don't know exactly. We don't have much to go off of. Yeah. And also because, 
I mean, everything else is so exciting. Like, <laughs> I mean, I just seen the Quidditch arena and I was just like, oh my god, like it's. I don't even care. I get to. Pl- I don't get to play it right now. Like, it's there. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's 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 nuts, and it's starting to get leaked. I mean, we're not. We won't talk about the leaks, but even the day we're recording this, like actually today, kind of is the floodgate opening thing. People are streaming it on Twitch. Um, which, you know, as it gets closer to the game, it's not so like egregious. I saw some people on Reddit saying like, how do these fools believe they're going to get away with it? If they legally obtain the game early, uh, eventually the companies kind of just give up in policing that. Like, like that's truly how, if you live stream the game like two weeks ahead of time, yeah, you're going to get, you're going to get hit. But as these next couple days, and by the time you guys see this on Saturday, you know the world and all the people that are giving these uh, these copies out it's very possible you just have to give up and there will be people that some and you wish you were those people i wish i was that person they got it early and uh those people are just going to start playing it and i was telling you you know before we we got on like i would not be surprised if the ending you know was out today tomorrow like one of those definitely by tuesday like before people play it for sure um and then Monday, you know, with the review scores going live. Speaking of review scores, where do you uh, – we can go a little bit into that. Where do you kind of stand on the review score process? What do you think about them, you know, specifically for Hogwarts? What are you expecting to see on Monday? Because that, that is, the you know, in, in terms of this show, that is the next thing that's going to happen before we get to play it is Monday morning, you know, that stuff comes. Man, um, it, it's kind of hard to – to say because there's the side of we don't know how good the game actually is yet. That's just the fact of the matter. As excited as we all are, yeah, we don't know because we we haven't played it yet. Um, there might be lucky few out there playing it, yeah, but <laughs> we haven't played it yet, and so like I don't know what to expect. Um, I feel in a lot of ways we're gonna be robbed of knowing how good or not good the game is because how could the content creators are going to be able to get their, their honest opinions on it. At least some of them. Yeah. I was going to say um, some, but, some of them. And the, the other negative thing is some of them won't, they'll be overly and, positive. You won't be able to gauge it that well either. That, that's the tough thing too. And so whether it goes for positive or negative, the, the heartbreaking thing is the, I feel like the publications is going to be another one. Um, it's yeah. it's going to be hard to gauge uh, how people really feel about the game as a whole. And I think that that's going to be the more tragic thing. So it's like, I'm looking forward to the reviews, but like, it's also one of those things where it's like, I'm expecting just dread and like unfair and then like both ways that would go like unfair as far as like overly positive unfair as far as overly negative and you know the controversy around the game like it's i feel like this is just a review more than any we've ever seen before yeah where you're going to have to play this for yourself to kind of gather it because there's just too much at play and involved in order to I feel like people to be professional and call it down the middle. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, I I don't think we've ever, like you said, we've never seen it. I saw a lot of people saying whenever they're going to see an article that even mentions JK immediately, they're done with that article. And I think a lot of the, I I can't imagine. I, I do, you know, read around, look around, you know, it's interesting. I like to see them dying as well, but you know, I, I really believe either the first paragraph or last paragraph and probably not, I would go so far like 90%. I think it's going to be overwhelming majority of any press because they're all the same. When we've t- I, I talk about this so much. They're all the same people. It's, just, it's the hive mind. It's just the same thing. And I really believe the first paragraph or last in all these articles is going to be some sort of statement. If you're feeling unsafe, if uh, if you don't know if you'll if if it's okay to like the game, that kind of stuff, and that'll be in every single one, and it's just it's all it's not necessary to say, 
Uh, you know, I talk about like speaking out so much, but sometimes it's also okay to not speak in this case, because it's really, you're, you're enabling when you, when you say stuff like that, you're making it worse. And I think if you, and that's as simple, it's not throwing any people under the bus. It's as simple as if you don't like it, don't get it. If you, or, or if you just don't want to buy it, it doesn't even matter if you like it or not, don't get it. If you want to make a point, but like, we don't need to be saying this every single time it's unnecessary. And it's just making it, you're, 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 you're making a safe space, like even more safe, which is not good for like shielding things is not good for anybody. You know? I also would add that everything isn't made for everyone. Correct. Right. And I feel like there's something if- for everyone, but not every game needs to be for, for everyone for everyone yeah. exactly and that's that's the purpose of genres and if we're gonna start saying like oh well somebody shouldn't buy this game then we might as well not have genres because yeah. that's what they're for is to separate things that people are interested in and i think that uh i've said it before now more than ever we need to like as just a whole get back in the habit of either being able and i know it's difficult for everybody this is a case by case as far as like separating the art from the artist but also just agreeing to disagree yeah um because if even if people who review this game could do that that would incite so much more confidence uh in getting a more accurate review of the game um professionalism stand on topic um and just agreeing to disagree and letting everybody experience or tackle these games in their own way and that's what i feel more than anything needs to happen and i think that that is the biggest uh tragedy when it comes to this game is that the reception no matter what no matter how good the game is, no matter it it literally will not be remembered for anything other than everything else that's going around it. And that's kind of that's kind of the the tragic part. But the game seems to be doing well sales wise. Yeah. Uh and I just wanna the team uh who put the hard work in is going to benefit from themselves. And that's that's what matters the most is the support so i would say yeah like that is the the best bright side you could possibly get out of this situation yeah. i guess yeah it's tough to like i i think the game is going to be really good it is going to be hard looking back 2 3 4 years from now especially if the game is just like fine the thing that people will remember with this game is the lead up of excitement and hate and canceling and like that's what's going to be remembered um unless the game now if the game is really good i think you know people will focus and and again there's there's a lot of people that don't care right i I think uh many people and i've always said this about like content creators specifically people put like too much whether it be uh maybe not trust but people put too much like faith or uh praise or whatever like we're not all that special we're just people that talk and that's something I think when you look at review scores and I mean, I've seen stuff on Reddit where it's like uh, good thing this uh, this game doesn't come from a wildly successful book series with wildly passionate fans with an author that's kind of, you know, the way she is. And uh, there's a lot of hate and there's a lot of love because that that actually is what we were just talking about. That makes it so hard to judge this game without biases because you have such a passionate you're looking at it just as a fandom thing or you absolutely hate everybody's guts. That's a lot of people. Even like, and you could say, well, there's like the normie people that kind of stay out of it. I'd argue still a lot of them have some connection to, including myself, Harry Potter. Like a lot of people still stem from that. So even for me, I think I'm one of the most unbiased, not to stroke, you know, pat my own back, but I I don't think I take into account those kind of things when I do game scores or when I, when I do reviews. But there is a bias, and I've covered it so much. I've talked about it the longest. Uh, it's Harry Potter. I love Harry Potter. Like, even for me. But that's why 
being an individual. And I think both of us have said, and you just said it a few minutes yes. ago, like you just got to decide it on your own. You don't need to make it's a big deal about it. it. You just need to decide it on your own. The day at, because yeah. I, I, I've also seen people that say, give it a week until unbiased reviewers review it. I still think you're putting a lot of faith in those reviewers. You should be putting the faith in yourself, not them. Yeah. You know what? But yet, I mean, and yet again, that is me. I will probably have to do a review like four days after the game. I will be a late review. So I guess I'm, I'm destroying my own reputation. But, I, but I, I sincerely mean it where it's like you can listen to – I hope you listen to me. I hope you, you know, like what I have to say. But when I say listen, I mean just literally like hear me. But you don't have to follow what I say. Make your own – and that's that's been my message for like four years. I don't know Forever. why it's so hard, <laughs> wink, wink, for people to get it. But it's really not that hard. It's make your own decisions. Make your own decisions. That's the – we like I said, we've seen it before. Uh, ironically – WB just seems to have the the work because that's they're more than any other uh I feel like gaming like company in general with everything that they do yeah like whether if it's movies whether if it's games you have to make your own decisions like Black Adam regardless of how you felt fans loved it I loved it I loved uh it. um Gotham Knights like I really enjoyed that game I I loved it in a lot of aspects like was it perfect no but I really loved the game and the world did not, you know, seem to feel the same way. Um, but you noticed that people that actually played it and like sites, like for example, steam, where you can only review it if you've purchased a copy and played it, uh, that had a pretty solid score. Much yeah. I think it was in the, like, yeah. the mid seventies, which was pretty, pretty good. Pretty solid. Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. uh, I'm kind of not yeah. even there. Like I talked about it so much. I was so excited. I thought it was fine. Like, I wouldn't say, you know what I mean? But that, that's just how it is. Who cares? Who cares yeah. what we think? <laughs> Except for us. It's that's all, all that really. Yeah. Yeah. We're the only ones that should care about what we think. Um, make your own. And, and pe but people do that. People will follow. If everybody's talking in, it's even the positive stuff. If everybody's saying positive yeah. stuff about Hogwarts, you jump on the thing. I even controversially said, you know, you really don't actually want your business model built on people buying Hogwarts to spite the cancel. Now, I don't think that's the majority. I think that's easily the minority. But you don't want that being like your thing going forward because that does run out. And things can change yep. in an instant that, that switches like the zeitgeist. It'll change. So you don't want the – and it's not. But you don't, never want to get to the primary reason to get Hogwarts is to stick it to the journalists. I know some people are. But it's not the majority, and it shouldn't be because that's a really bad model. It just is long term because it, it will not continue. We'll never know if the game succeeded or failed on its own merit because of that. True, so that too. it's yeah, like sends the, the wrong message to you know potentially mm -hmm. sends the wrong message that oh they like the game. Well, no, not really. The game's okay. They bought it because they're just trying, and that can get in people's minds. So, yeah, I mean the the ripple effect is really bad, you know, from, and it goes the other yes. way too. You know, that, that, that same kind of yep. ideology, you don't want that to be your main detractor, your main, uh, whatever the opposite of detractor would be like the thing that pulls you in. You don't want it to be your main anything. It should always be in the background. And I, I, th it is, I think the reason is the, the discourse is very loud. That is like the main reason. Right. But I think the, I think people actually buying it, you know, it's kind of off to the side more. What do you uh I could talk about the controversies literally my whole life and I probably will but what do you th what is uh let's say this what is your most anticipated thing to do people always ask me like what's the first thing you'll do in the game you can answer that what are you like most interested in doing in in Hogwarts legacy exploring the castle uh exploring the castle exploring the grounds uh there is a clip in my thread uh, from one of the uh, creators that got to uh, do the footage from the event, and yeah. he had found this hidden cave. Yes. Um, and it was inside, like the uh, the giant squid that lies in the water, like in the books. And so I was like, and then I think a few days later, uh, like Hogwarts team officially like said that there was a like a squid in the water. Yeah. Um. So I was like, 
I kind of want to like after exploring the castle, my next order of business is finding it. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how that would how that would work, how you would trigger it. Uh, it looked like it was like a little like a casing or something there that you could possibly interact with. Yeah. So I'm like, I I want to look into how to to <laughs> see it. Like yeah. that that's what I want. I will swim for hours <laughs> without getting on the broom <laughs> as long as it takes to to trigger whatever I need to trigger. Yeah. Uh, but those would be the first two things that uh, I probably want to do and um, see if I can wear the Quidditch gear. Yeah, uh, well, uh, without going into the leaks, I'm pretty sure you can. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> and again, not to get too far into the leaks, but like the map, I will say, you know, I caved. I looked at the map. It's a gig. Without explaining it, I won't show pictures because I don't think we're allowed. It's huge. This thing, this map is Good ginormous, and it's. It's kind of huge outside of Hogwarts. It's not even including the castle, which in a map geography is rather small, right? Like Hogwarts Castle is pretty small, but you know how deep it can go with all its layers. And then there's outside of Hogwarts, not even Hogsmeade, just Hogwarts, and it's enormous. And then there's also Hogsmeade, and then there's the castle itself. So, um, yeah, I, you know, I had said, and I still believe, I mean, not every game needs to be 100 hours. I really unless the game is super special it it'll overstay its welcome i think persona is like persona red dead witcher there's not that many and when and persona is pretty different it's not an open world in the same way so the games that pull it off are normally the gold stand you know what i mean they're like the, the games gold standard the top of the top yeah yep. so it's tough for hogwarts because i i don't think in a lot of ways Again, maybe kind of, I don't think it's the top of the top. I think it's, I think lore accurate and and attention to detail. I think it is probably the leader. I think people will look to Hogwarts for the future. But like combat, while it looks awesome and people have actually only said good things about it, I don't think it's going to revolutionize combat. I think it's, oh, you know, I'm, you know, many, and it's not a slight against. Do it. Yeah. Yeah, like how many other games would have use for it? I mean, it's right. it's brilliant, but it's like how many other games are you like fencing from afar? Right, right. You're you're not. So yeah, I so think I, it I, I don't think it's probably be something exclusive to them. To yeah, be honest. and it doesn't need to set the. That's not you know that's kind of the yeah, point I'm trying to get to. to. It doesn't need to set the bar. So like on one side, could it really be a 100 plus hour thing? I'm starting to think it could be. On the other side, I mean that does. Even though it's Hogwarts, it does make me a little worried because only the, you know, you think of the best. I won't say, I won't say to get too specific, but the collectibles definitely seems like a collectathon kind of thing. But I, I believe it actually has less than Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild had like 800 collectibles or something nuts like that, right? It had like 800 something. This game doesn't have that, but it's pretty close. Oh and my god. <laughs> I've never been a big fan of collectathons of anything. Um and I but I and you can read into that as little or as much as you want, right? You could you could say, "Oh, that's like a padding thing, so now it's a little bit more negative," or maybe they just did a phenomenal job and it's just an extra thing to do. I'll tell you after once we get off. <laughs> I'll tell you, you know, because oh I think you see god. it in the map. I, it shows it shows how many and all. But uh I just hear like 800 and then it's close. It's, it's close not to, that but it's close and I'm like It's man, lower than I'm, 8, but it's close to 8. Um I'm I'm tapping out after 100. <laughs> like <laughs> And for those things it always depends to me. Like people always bag on the Riddler stuff and I don't think Riddler is like or the Riddler trophies are the most uh they're not the greatest part of any of those games. I honestly don't hate them nearly as much as other people. I think they give you something to do. I think they're different mm -hmm. enough from each other. Like, there's the wild factor of Arkham Knight where it's like, how in God's name did you build these racetracks underground? Like, that's absolutely ridiculous. But some of the puzzles, the many little things that are just hanging around these buildings that you have to do, ran you have to use different gadgets, it's very smart. I actually think it's very. I mean, that, maybe that's controversial. I don't hate it nearly as much as other people. I honestly love the way that they're executed. I think the only thing, because I, I am one of those people who will say I hate the Riddle Trophies, but here's okay. why I hate the Riddle Trophies. I love the Riddles themselves. Um, I love. I think that they're all pretty much clever. I agree with everything you said. My only problem, and like 
this is why I get the strategy guide to, to alleviate yeah. that is finding them. If I could see them with their with the amount that they have in like in Arkham Knight, if you're gonna have that much, at least like give me a ballpark of the the, the area. Like I instead you have to kind of walk past it. You gotta see it. You gotta mark it so yeah. that way it's on your map always. And I'm just like, I'm not trying to spend hours guessing yeah where these trophies are and i think that that is the reason more than anything that i hate them but like i love them so if you can give me like an area of like hey there's like six riddler trophies over here in this area but like the strategy guide once you got that then it's just like oh well i know where this one is i know where that one is i will have fun all day figuring it out i just I don't want to look. I think randomly, like Assassin's like, Creed does a pretty it. okay job of that, doesn't it? Where it has regions mm-hmm. and it shows you a you know a key. It has all there's seven things in this area. That's the way to do it. Yeah, that's the way to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So as long as the collectibles, Rocksteady, if are... you're listening, huh? If you're listening, Rocksteady, <laughs> you're you're gonna do that in Suicide Squad. Oh man, uh, please. <laughs> I don't know. I I really can't imagine they actually I never really thought of that. I can't imagine they would do that in Suicide Squad to be honest. They have to like know that it's a I don't know if it's the majority. Well, they would know. They you well firstly you can hear it and see it online, but then they have all the stats for like the trophies and pink like achievements and stuff. They would know how many people actually engaged in that stuff in the game to know it. And honestly, that's the thing for Hogwarts. I mean, that's literally how it works, right? For uh, Hogwarts Legacy 2, if they notice that point zero 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 five percent of people got all the collectibles, it's telling you that you have too many, or it's telling you they're too, or it's telling you something. It's too hard. It's too redundant. It's too something, and you have to fix it. And they have all those stats right behind the scenes. So uh, you the imagine they learn not. from that stuff. <laughs> Tears of the Kingdom has no trophies. Uh, well, Nintendo doesn't. So there's no way they learned unless... That's, like, oh, well, Nintendo also just oh, doesn't care. Man. Nintendo just does its own <laughs> thing. And you fall in line. And people do. We, we all literally... You know, people are saying... Um, I, I see people still bringing up Zelda with... Uh, well, there's a couple of things. Let me bring up... We're kind of going on a tangent here, but, I mean, that's the point. Uh, Jedi Survivor. I firmly believe it wasn't moved because of Hogwarts. There's a lot of people that are saying that it's scared of Hogwarts. I think Jedi Survivor is one of the only games that shouldn't be afraid of Hogwarts. I don't think... And now they're saying it's too close to Zelda and stuff like that. I really... I believe them. I think it's just Polish. Yeah, I think think it honestly is Polish because I would... If I'm being honest, it's just me. Because Hogwarts is... It's kind of that thing where... When people were like Hogwarts moved out of the way for God of War, I think people yeah. underestimate how yeah. big the Harry Fr- the Potter franchise is. The last thing I think they'd be scared of is going against God of War of all things. Yeah, I mean, I feel like they would be more scared of going against a Star Wars game than because it at least almost rivals them in popularity worldwide. Yeah, um, the fact that they would move closer to tears of the kingdom is why i'm thinking like <laughs> it has to be polished yeah. uh it it 100 has to be but i don't think that they're scared of tears of the kingdom either right. because the first game was so good it was received so well and you have that star wars licensing um they're not scared of neither one of them yep. it, it has to be polished because that's the only thing it could be yeah no I, I agree i think that's a really Nice way of saying it. And I think people then will discount Tears of the Kingdom. And it's like, yeah, it's a different console, and it's only on one. But people, re- I think people really underestimate how well. Like, we should do a predictions thing you know, as we get closer, because I really don't think people assume Zelda's going to sell, like, 20 million in the first year. I think pretty easily. Rev- the first one was a revolutionary game. Yeah. I mean, it changed so much with the gaming industry. Like, I, I would never, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> underestimate that. Yeah, game. I think I think people do, and yeah, and it's odd with these major franchises. Like, I look at it for the smaller ones. Forspoken clearly got out of God of War's way, clearly, and their their delay statement basically admitted to it. They talked to Sony, 
to restructure, like these kind of keywords that were in there. Like, yeah, you totally had the talk and said, hey, this is not going to work out well for us. So, you know, we should probably, I really believe, and I believe that does happen. And I believe games have been sunk. Like, uh, wasn't it Wolfenstein and Evil Within 2 released within two weeks of each other from Bethesda? And I think Evil Within 2 was the one that got smoked because of it. It got dist- It didn't sell at all. So there are worries. There are purposeful placements of games. Nobody's saying there's not. But I think for the big dogs, when you think to Jedi, Hogwarts, God of War. See, G- Hogwarts shouldn't be afraid of God of War, but God of War should not be afraid of Hogwarts either. You know what I mean? It goes exactly. It goes both, both ways. ways. Uh, Diablo, I'd say, is probably one different. Again, maybe people underestimate it. But, I mean, there's only – now, there is only a handful. Spider-Man 2, Starfield. There's probably only six, seven, eight games, maybe in the whole year and any year, that aren't afraid. The rest probably are, but it just uh, it's just something that always piques my interest when uh, specifically with Hogwarts because we've seen a lot of that stuff. Is Hogwarts afraid? Is Jedi Survivor afraid? Those are two of eight that I think aren't afraid of anything because you, like you said, IP or the first game, Fallen Order, sold really well. Survivor is gonna sell like. 10 12 14 million it's gonna do really nice you know i don't know if people expect to. that but um so those are the games that shouldn't be afraid a game like the wolf among us probably should be afraid even maybe alan wake 2 if it goes up the week before starfield i'd be terrified like there are even yeah. some of the bigger games i'd be scared but not not these ones we're talking about here exactly and that's the other thing is uh other than that, I think the only other way that games would be kind of scared of each other is if they're literally in the same genre. Yeah. So like, I don't think that the I don't think Horizon Zero Dawn was too too affected sales wise because of Zelda. However, because they came out so close to each other, Zelda affected them in a different way because it just totally stole the news realm. Like it was the talk. Yeah. And it was the comparison to when you played Horizon Zero Dawn, and they're like, "Well, this is the better version." Yeah, and th- that's what that's kind of the the thing that happened. There. I think Horizon so, Escape because Horizon, the first one, sold extremely well. Extremely I well. would buy the yeah. argument that Elden Ring hurt Forbidden West more than Zelda hurt oh, Zero Dawn. Oh, for sure, for sure. Um, I think Zelda hurt it like maybe media wise. Uh, Elden Ring hurt it financially. For yeah, sure. it it took it. It took it. Elden Ring was something that we all expected, but I don't think we really expected to be what it was. Yeah, we I don't like, think people okay, thought it would sell well, like but... twenty million in half a year or something <laughs> ridiculous. It's probably at like twenty million right now. Yeah. Well, see now, but now they know. Now the next. Fr- I don't think Armored Core is like that. I don't think games should be afraid of Armored Core. But the next no. from software, you know, big game. That will be a game others avoid like the plague, you know? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Any, uh, uh or go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, no, no, okay. I was going to say, any then, final uh, thoughts like, on Hogwarts? Hogwarts, uh, I'm excited for not only myself, not only for Alex, but all the Harry Potter fans out there, the Wizarding World fans out there that has wanted a game like this their entire life. I, I hope that it is everything that you wanted it to be um, and more. Um, even if some people, I know I've seen people say like, they're just going to put it on story. They don't want the difficulty. They just want to experience the world, just feel what it feels like to walk around in there. Whatever your reasons for getting this game is, I hope you enjoy it. I hope it's everything that you want it to be. I don't want it to be a disappointment to anybody. I also, when talking about the game, as far as like how good it is, try just think for yourself, um, be realistic, and just have fun. This is what games are for—to have fun, and that's why we're here. Yeah. Um, so let this be a exciting week for you, uh, or weekend going up. Uh, be excited if you got a copy of a, a physical copy at a GameStop. Go to the midnight release if they're having it. Just do whatever you can to just stay hype and positive yeah yeah oh, very, very well said it's it's a game we love games 
It's a game yes. that we've been asking for for so long. It's a game we've been talking about for so long. Um, I really hope it's good. And I've never really expected it to be the thing for me. Right. To, to continue throwing out hot takes, I wouldn't be surprised at all if it's not my game of the year at the end of this year. I could see The Wolf Among Us. Really, because I, could, I, I, I love The Wolf that. Among Us so much. So the second game, if they tell a good story, it, it gets a, you know, it's going to get a bump. The guy who made Dang and Rampa is doing a, a, a rain code, which is kind of like a Dang and Rampa is one of the best series, period, of all time. So that, you know, and it's, it's odd to say because I, I mean, as I don't want to diminish Hogwarts legacy is I I've, I'm so excited. Like it's a different level. And some of it comes from like the content creation point too, but I, weirdly enough, I wouldn't be surprised if it's not my favorite game, but maybe that too much how, competition this year. Yeah. Spider-Man two, too much. you know, yep. there, there's a lot of them. So, but at the same time, maybe uh, inadvertently I'm lowering my own expectations. So when I get the game, if they nail it, if it's incredible, to me, it's really going to come down to that story, the story yep. and the characters. Yep. Um, and I guess that encapsulates voice acting, which I've always been pretty shaky on, specifically our main character's voice. Like That could be the deciding factor because I, I don't think there's any doubt that this will be the game to explore the world. Uh, I, I think it's going to yeah. be a near perfect game in that sense. The combat, I'm really excited because it looks, it's always looked good to me. I support it when people didn't like it. Oddly enough, I did that. But people have only said good things about it, so I'm pumped for that. It's going to come down, what's Poppy's story? What's Sebastian's story? What's the main story? Is Ranrock and Rookwood good villains? If they're not good villains, it's not going to be – it's going to hurt. You know what I mean? Not, yeah, it's going to Th- hurt big time. Those are the things that this game is going to have to nail. And in the same way you could say that Avalanche has never done a big open world game, you could also say they've never done uh, a story-driven, like a narrative thing like that. They've never done either. I never thought about that. Yeah. I've never thought about Be- these that. people always thought, you know, I've talked about it, you know, the mechanics, how the, how an open-world game feels. Yes, they've never done it. They've also never written thousands and thousands of dialogue and branching dialogue and characters react. They've never done... And that some of that is, I suppose, open-world things, but also just like telling a story of this magnitude some of the cut scenes, some of the cinematics, they've never done this. So that's another, and I, I, I always leave that out, but I don't know how good of writers they are. <laughs> you know what I mean? That, that stuff could it's fall apart. And, <laughs> and that's the stuff that we really have no evidence to suggest if it's good or bad, no. I'd, say, and I'd I, say. That's one of the reasons why I say uh, I haven't said what my, like normally I can always outright say like, <clears throat> this is my personal game of the year. I have not been able to say that because there's so much um yeah. entirely too much coming out this year <laughs> um and the, and like my favorite my favorite game to play of all time would be WrestleMania 2000 my favorite franchise is Devil May Cry um so there is a game coming out that is literally trying to replicate the engine but like modernize it that was used in WrestleMania in 2000 or in No Mercy. So that game is high on my radar. Yeah. Um, you got Jedi Survivor, that is. It's just, I I honestly feel like anyone who is saying right now that Hogwarts Legacy is going to be their personal game of the year, it's probably because Harry Potter means that much to them. And that, yeah. that was me in 2018 with Spider-Man. There was, there was nothing. Um, that even I played God of War. And God of War was amazing. Spider Man was still my game of the year. Yeah. So no, and, um, and there's a difference between <laughs> per like uh, personal fate, you know, something that connects with you, and then something that's. But yet again, like objectively good, is there such a thing that's objectively every because there's n- everybody agrees on it? Not really. Um, even like The Last of Us Part Two is not a. I always say that uh, Last of Us Part Two is not objectively good. It's a split game. Some people hate, so you it's can never split. say that. It can be a personal favorite. That's totally fine. But to claim that it's like the and I don't and I never unanimous. think unanimous. It was not unanimous. Yeah, and I and and yeah, that's tough unanimous. to give those kind of games game of the years as well. Just a side thing. Whenever yeah. a game is that split, I don't know if it should win game of the year if half the people you know don't like it. Um, yeah, there's a difference between personal favorite and and uh, what connects with you, and 
it I don't know it, it it's tough it's tough for Hogwarts I'm really hoping that it nails it uh I think it'll be a really good game and uh you know enjoying it in the moment and then seeing what comes you know if, if there is DLC if there is a sequel they got people I mean they got people by the <laughs> whatever you want to say uh everybody's in it for the the long yeah. haul I'd say beyond it's gonna be interesting actually to look at a Hogwarts Legacy 2 because it's like now you have one so the initial the hype of like this is the first one that's gone now it's just you know what I mean now it's other things yeah, the, the sequels are always uh, somewhat interesting. I, I, I feel the same way for Scream. You know, I cover Scream 5 and 6. That new factor that, like, oh, we're back. We're bringing Scream back with Scream 5. You don't have that when you have a movie the next year. You can't say that anymore. It's got to – you got to build it off of something else. Now, I do think they are. And for Hogwarts Legacy 2, it's kind of the same thing. This is – you can't say this is, like, every Wizards fan's dream because, well, what was the first game? Right, like you can't say that anymore. So you you have to. It's got to be bigger and better. Like you got to just go let, for it. Let me ask you this. Yes. Do you think that Hogwarts Legacy Two? Yes. <laughs> That's the, the answer. First, <laughs> will be the first time we actually get an indication on like what people actually think of the game. Yeah. Because the goggles will be off at that point. Enough time will have been passed. We had done this song and dance again. I doubt we see it again. Um, do you think that that is the first game where we actually get the more accurate consensus on how yeah. everybody feels about the way the game is structured? Yeah, I think so. I think this yeah. one's clouded. It's going to be clouded yes. and, and positive, but which is fine. Because again, all that matters is you. You know, what I mean, I we have to keep saying that because pe people do get a little sensitive <laughs> with it. But it, but it is truly real. It only matters what you think. But you know, taking a few steps back. Yeah, this one's going to have biases all over the place. The second one, it's going to be on the merit of the game. This one's so much that we just talked about it. So much of this, we don't know the story. We don't know these characters. We don't know anything. So much of the second game is going to have to be that. Here's the additions. We're doing Quidditch. Quidditch can go wrong real fast. There's a lot of bad Quidditch implementations in the, in the Harry Potter games. Uh, Quidditch World Cup is good, right? But... So, like, there's things that can go wrong, but that's the game. You'll be focusing straight on on that game. And, uh, yeah, I, I think, like, the mechanics will kind of start to be the bigger thing. Well, can we make it a true – why can't it be Red Dead 2 now? Because you're going to make so much money off of this one. Hire the people yeah. you need. The next one, there's really no excuse why you shouldn't be able to join. We always, I, I've always taught, right, there's the tiers. I still think CD Projekt Red is in that higher tier. I think Rockstar is there, right? You got those. They're not there. They're just not, which is fine because it's their first game, right? They're in the tier, I think, below it. The next game, with how much money this game makes, there's no reason that if they don't do it, that's a negative now. I will hold that against them because you should take the next step. I'm not saying, I mean, to become Rockstar is pretty difficult, but you should be kind of a in the range. There's in the studio. They're in the range. They're they're known for innovation. I mean, look, they they created the Nemesis system. Yeah, I I, I expect great. Ironically, this is something that's said in the damn Harry Potter movies. <laughs> I expect great things from them. <laughs> so, <laughs> like that is, I one hundred percent agree with that. Like I I would expect them to join. And I just look at it from money it, too. They're gonna make so yeah. much money that you should be able to hire. The best you you can wait out people. You can be a naughty dog and hire exactly who you want to get. Your bar moves exactly. up, and also the pressure moves up because because what if the second game doesn't do as well, right? Like you you have all Warner Bros can go to Avalanche and say, well, you made so much money, you sold seventeen million. We're looking for like twenty three now for the next game, and if you don't hit that, that's a huge problem right and so those things are gonna start happening in the next year and um it's gonna be it's gonna be a whole different kind of journey but i'm very excited to be bigger for it and <laughs> and not ignored and all those other things um but no i i'm pumped i'm and i look at things in the future that's just kind of how my mind is wired i know i uh, you know people say focus on the you know the present uh enjoy what you have now i agree with i mean i'm going to uh, get soaked up in the world. I want to put as many hours as I can now because of 
when I'm getting it, most likely, uh, you know, there's other games to play. I don't know if I'll be able to play it. I want to play it four times, says each of the house. Well, my wife is going to play Ravenclaw, so I'd play it three times. She'd play it once. I don't know how likely that is anymore. Just be, you know, yeah. March is pretty dead though now. Without Jedi, pretty dead. Yeah. So and that's why I was like, it, I may have time. Like it will, <laughs> yeah, it, it will give me more time to play Hogwarts Legacy because at first, honestly, I was expecting like maybe one or two playthroughs tops because my first playthrough is gonna, it's when I'm gonna explore everything. Yeah. Um, and if it's like, um, I think I heard Joy Raptor say something about like it's over a hundred side quests 100 plus side like quests yeah yeah so if that's the case then like my first playthrough is gonna take me weeks anyway yeah. i don't know how many like how many playthroughs i'm gonna realistically get in between now and march but now that jedi survivors push back all i have in march personally is wb 2k23 yeah so i got resident I, Evil. and resident evil so i mean it's I can make a few more happen, but like there is um there's yeah. no longer that game where I'm like I'm gonna drop everything for it and I'm just gonna play Jedi Survivor. Yeah, That's no longer there for at, me. At this point, it's Resident Evil for me, and then it's all the way till well, Horizon Burning Shores is mid April, and then April twenty eighth. We will and you know, there's Atomic Heart, there's a couple of things, but in in all reality, you're gonna have almost what, two months. Two months, generally, maybe six, seven weeks of, if you want, just Hogwarts stuff. And then everything will be put aside. And I think because of that, I will put it aside for any... So, like, when Atomic Heart comes out, I probably will stop Hogwarts to give it... Because I'll have time. I'll just go back into Hogwarts when that's done. Um, yeah, thanks, I guess, to Jedi Survivor for moving out. Not Again, not for its own sake. I really... I would have put Hogwarts down for Jedi Survivor, like a hundred percent. Not like if it came oh, out the week sure. a- if it came out like a week after, that'd be really tough. But you know, yeah. it was going to come out a month, a month after Hogwarts. Right, then I would have done everything we wanted to do. Yeah, yeah, I would have put Hogwarts right. aside for sure for it. That's good for us, like now. But boy, are we going to pay for it? April through June is going to be just a freaking oh disaster, <laughs> an absolute I'm... disaster. Because now there's I've almost a rush told. for Jedi. You have to kind of rush Jedi a little bit. And then also yes. Dead Island gets completely screwed. Completely. Yes. I feel so bad for it. Because I honestly, I would, I still want it. I was going to get it. I don't know if I would get it the same. I mean, I really got to be smart with money. This is not economically for the U.S. a great year. Um, yes. Would I really buy Dead Island 2 and Jedi Survivor the same day? I mean, I'm not going to play Dead Island 2 for like a we- easily a week, right? You imagine? Yeah. So like, why would I get it that week anyway? And that's that's a tough one. I mean, and then you got Suicide Squad and Zelda. Yeah. And I'm just like... <laughs> I think Diablo Honestly, will move. The closer we get, Diablo I think Diablo is out of there. I don't think Diablo is June. I think Suicide Squad will move. It, it kind of has to. You I, think I so? Don't, you're you're between. You're you're in the middle of Zelda, Street Fighter, and, and G- Diablo. And, and, yeah, and uh, Jedi Survivor because it's not yeah, that, even yeah. though it's in a different month, it's still like within a few days range. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't. Yeah, like that is. Well, if they, they would I mean, have to move. you just look at Jedi Survivor now. If Suicide Squad is still quiet, we said it. I mean, we predicted it for Jedi Survivor. We said after Dead Space, you either show it or it's delayed. They delayed it yep. for for Suicide Squad. It's after Hogwarts. Within, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm really am looking at the calendar. By the end of February, they need to do something for Suicide. They just do to combat yep. the leaks, firstly, but also to like you just need to start doing stuff. If you don't do stuff by the end of February, that game's gone. It's not coming out in, in end of May. It's just not. I, I think we should go with our gut on that feeling because we have the same feeling for Jedi, and we were honestly yeah. right. So, yeah, it's possible Suicide Squad, and I, I really don't think Diablo makes it. The rumor is Starfield still wants to come out in June, though. So, my dear Lord. I don't know what to say. If, if, if every game makes it and then Starfield... I think that will be historically one of the busiest stretches of big games ever in gaming right. from from Jedi to the end of June. If all the games and then Starfield, I don't know another stretch that's bigger than that. 
you know? No, and then you go, I think, I think Spider-Man is going to keep that September date. Yeah, they I think that's on. what it'll try. I, they're going to try, and that's going to, even that, that will be a game no matter what I'm dropping everything yeah. for. But, yeah. uh, <laughs> I, man, this stretch is going to be so pain. It's going to be so fun. Yeah. Fun. Just but stressful. painful. Yeah. Because <laughs> like, we don't really feel like we're going to get to enjoy it. I think that that's going to be the downside. It's like, I got to rush through Survivor at a certain point. I have to yep. rush through, like Zelda, I can't rush through. Like it's, <laughs> I think last time I found all the shrines before I even felt comfortable going to Ganon. So I was just like, that's my way of like completing everything. Yeah. Because you can go to Ganon right out the gate. So it's like, I wonder if that's what they'll do again or if they'll structure it different but yeah that's going to be a whole undertaking in itself and the suicide squad is just like yeah i feel like i would rush that and like zelda would be the one that i take my time with out of the out of the three between survivor yeah zelda and uh and and, and i hate doing that i uh, you know i yeah but i do it I, I do it more than i want to but i truly but you know as a creator I mean, it's it's just factually different. I mean, I envy the people that have been waiting just for Hogwarts. They don't care about anything else. They will take yes. the whole year. Like they don't care about Suicide the whole Squad. Year. They, you know, they don't care. Um, there's something very boring to that. I find, but there's also something I you know what I mean like I envy it so much because there is no rush. You get to soak it in. There's no pressure literally at all. And that's and I, I truly am saying that's great. Like I really respect that. On the oh, flip I'm side, of it. <laughs> on the other side, it really is boring, and I do appreciate what I'm doing. You know, what I mean, like I, I feel good because I don't know if I could. I don't, actually don't know if I could do that. If you gave me a game and say, "Here's your game for the next three," now some people's financial situation, how old they are. When I was a teenager, I'd get games on my birthday and on Christmas. My birthday is almost six months, almost the day of Christmas, so every half year, and I would get six to eight games. And I would; those would be my games for the next six months. Like I remember that; I'll never forget that. So I know what it's like. But I, right now in my life, like being older and what, I, I can't even imagine. My attention span's worse or whatever. I can't imagine doing that again if I had to go back to that and say, "All right, Alex, wait I till could. Christmas. You get five games. You don't get any games until your birthday. Then you get. That's when you'll get Hogwarts. Then you won't get any games till Christmas. I'd go nuts. I'd beat them in like a month, and I'd say, "Well, what do I do now?" I guess I'd play Rocket yep. League for four months, <laughs> you know? Me with Halo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Halo. <laughs> so, yeah, that is, um, man. We're... There's pros and cons. <laughs> we're, we're in it together, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we're the, we're, the same, we're the same breed, and I think that's what, I think that's literally why this show works is because I don't think we could both just talk about one thing every one single game, no. You know. I couldn't. Like, it's boring. It's too boring for us. Well, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I think we actually covered way more than we thought we were going to cover in this video. Uh, let us know what you think about Hogwarts, what you think about Jedi Survivor, all this stuff. Uh, next week will probably be some sort of Hogwarts impressions video, and uh, then we'll go from there. I do want to do uh, like an Atomic Heart thing. When Atomic Heart comes out, we'll talk about it. But Sway, do you have any final closing marks uh, you want to say? As always, Thank you for supporting the channel. Thank you for supporting the podcast. I really appreciate it. I know Alex really appreciates it. Keep sending those questions in. We will get to them eventually. <laughs> One day. <laughs> um, and just thank you for always watching and supporting us. I see the tweets, um, whether they're on Alex's Twitter or whether they're on mine. I always appreciate you guys reaching out. Thank you so much for the support. I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, we see it. You know, even if uh, we don't necessarily respond, even we appreciate it we we believe we have very good chemistry i think other people see that we have good chemistry so we're really happy with it. and next week's episode 10 may ah, you know ah, well we'll see about timing we have to throw in a live stream of an episode eventually we'll, we'll talk about it uh off screen but thank you all so much for being here we really do appreciate it enjoy hogwarts and we'll see you all in the next one